Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Today's guests are both Emmy award-winning actresses who've entertained millions of daytime fans with their portrayals of strong, independent female characters on the numerous daytime dramas they have appeared on. They are great friends, and together they are producing and directing not one, but two online web series, Venice the Series and Beacon Hill the Series as well. Please welcome to the locker room, Crystal Chappelle and Hillary B. Smith. Good, here we go. Crystal, Hillary, Hi. thanks Hi, for joining me. Hi there. <laughs> How you both hanging in? Uh, you know. You know, hanging yeah. in. You know, you know. <laughs> Doing the best we can. I got a, um, a mask, a cat Dana from Catherine Hicklin. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. nice. I, so like that. I, uh, I tend nice. to move it around my neck, so I have it just in case. So you don't forget it. I well, know a lot of times. Well, a lot of times I run out. Besides, he likes to be close and personal every now and then. I have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that that's not good. I had just asked Crystal backstage about her son Jacob, who's fighting fires out west. So mm -hmm. we keep him in our thoughts and appreciate Thanks. that because that is uh, crazy. What's happening out out west? He's doing well. He's doing well, and and. Uh, yeah, and the fires are subsiding, so we'll just keep heading in that direction. You and he was married back in April, right? Uh, yeah, May first, actually. But yeah, right. he's married. He's you know got a wife, my beautiful daughter-in-law Grace. But I swear to God, I, there's so much change this year that I I I don't even know who I am anymore. You know? <laughs> like, what happened? Yeah, it's serious. Yeah. So the so the two of you are great friends. Did it begin at One Life to Live? Or did you meet prior to that? We met, but we didn't. We became friends at One Life to Live. Yeah, yeah. Did you hit it off immediately? I don't remember. It was. I mean, it was. It was we uh, what? I, we got along. I just uh, <laughs> really we just something. I don't remember like remember that moment when it was like, oh, we're going to be best buds for life. It, but except that we had a we would commiserate um, yeah. about the shit that was like. Why are they making me take juggling lessons? And <laughs> Why are they wear making you wear a habit? This <laughs> woman in daytime and they made her a nun. What are they thinking? So yeah. we were, she was great to talk to about this stuff. So <laughs> I don't know. No, it was just sort of like I've always I've always known you. Uh, you we've yeah. just always been friends. Yeah. It's been what what did we figure out? How when did you come on One Life to Live? Ninety. Five? Two? 95, 95, yeah. Some, 95. It was 90s, I know that. So we've been friends for 25 years? Okay. <laughs> Is that 25 years or 25 years? <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. I just did a, did a long... Too. <laughs> Care of the one. <laughs> yeah. Crystal, I just did a long drive to visit my family, and we, we downloaded RuPaul's uh, podcast. And she cracks me up because every time she's like, uh, I don't do that math thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, math is too hard, you know, trying to do the years. Everyone asks about, everyone asks about the years. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So your first soap roles, uh, Hillary was the doctors and Crystal, small role on All My Children, but really Santa Barbara was your role. Yeah. What, what, what do you remember about Santa Barbara, your first day or your well, screen test there? Well, I was only there for a week. A week? Oh, at Santa Barbara. Something oh like that. Oh, my God. I was like, I didn't know you were on Santa Barbara. No, I was only there for like a week um, and a, like a day on, on, on my children, then a week on Santa Barbara. And it was actually while I was on Santa Barbara on the NBC lot that the casting director from Days saw me. So Days gotcha. was my, my big first break. So talk yeah. about how did... Did that come shortly after Santa Barbara? Pretty soon after. Yeah. I got called in for that part. So um, it was great. I mean, it was, I didn't know anything about that stuff and the being on, really being on camera that much. So that took adjusting. And at the time they were still using cue cards. So that was interesting working with people using cue cards. But I do remember, um, cause I worked with- And, that, and that's early nineties? That, that was 1990. Wow. May of 90, I joined. So you, 
I had to uh, be topless on my first day. So that was my. Well, not well, something you soon forget. Debut. It was the girl's big debut. <laughs> it was, we all debuted. That's not something you soon forget either. No, because it's like, well, you, anyway, it was just. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean. It's... It was me taking off my top on a beach and then lying down on my stomach. And it was Judy Evans and Wally Kurth and um, we. We became fast friends. <laughs> well, do you remember you who you screen tested with? with? Was, I'm do sorry. What? Had, do you remember who you had to screen test with? Um, uh, Peter Reckle. Yeah, because it was specific for the character Bo. Were you yeah. nervous? Oh, you know, yes. going in? Oh, sure. I mean, I'm so I amazed at actors who go, "Yes, I love auditioning, and it's so easy." I'm always like petrified, but. I knew it was a big deal, but I also knew that I had nothing to lose. <laughs> so, you know, you just had to connect. And Peter and I had a really nice chemistry, so he made it easy for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I remember. Well, that's, that's always awesome. Um, I know with Hillary, Hillary always wanted to be on a soap. She had watched soaps. Did you watch soaps? I did, I did. I watched um, the ABC lineup. That was my thing growing up. I watched, uh, all my children, one life, and General Hospital, and sort of because I couldn't watch three hours of it. <laughs> you know, it was I would fake being sick to stay home if something big was happening. And in college, of course, I videotaped it, and it was devastating when you got home and the tape didn't do its thing, right? Oh um, my God, yes, because that was it. it. Was devastating. Yeah. yeah, but no, I loved oh, yeah. ABC, so I'd never even watched any other network, so I had no idea who anybody really was except from soap magazines. Oh, totally back then you had to be home. I mean, there's no yeah. DVR, you know, me too. You know, you were, ran home, Guiding Light was still at three o'clock. So it was great for me until, yeah. you know. Um, and Hillary, I'm doing a show on Friday uh, with Retro TV, a virtual reunion with the doctors, <gasps> with some of the folks oh. from the doctors. Um, Who's Nancy gonna be Sat there, Liz Hubbard? No, not this time. It's Anna Stewart, Jonathan Frakes, Nancy Stafford, Marie Thomas Foster, uh, David Elliott and Frank Telf Telfler. Teffler. Um, Teffler. Give Frank and Nancy my best because they were on, we overlapped. Okay. And what do you remember about that? You watched The Doctors, if I, right? Oh, I yes. Oh, yes. I watched The Doctors and I met David O'Brien down in um, Florida where I was um, home on spring vacation and I met him because he was doing something at the Royal Point Santa Playhouse and I went up to him and um, said, oh, you should stay away from Kurt, you know. And I did the whole, that whole thing. And then I, you know, ha, 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 that, ha. that many people over the years have done to you. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's done that before. Oh, yeah. Um, but then I asked him, I said, I, how do you get on a soap opera? That's all I want to do. I want to get on a soap opera. And he was so sweet. And then he said to me, because I have a feeling I'm going to see you again. And my first daytime gig was the doctor. If I walked in and my first scene was with him. And I went in and I said, I don't know whether you remember me. He goes, yeah, I do. I knew I'd see you again. So it was really sweet. It was really exciting. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, one of our fans, Tara, just said, oh, my God, Crystal is telling my story. VHS failures and skipping school for big events. <laughs> don't tell our children that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're in class on their phones, right? Isn't that it's a whole different yeah. Exactly. If you didn't follow this path, and acting, what do you think you both would be doing? Oh, Hillary. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was getting my master's in human genetics at the same time I was getting my theater um, degree. But I have to tell you, I, um, I didn't really have the discipline for that. I, I think I probably would have gone into fashion or home design. Just like math is hard, what does human genetics really? What? Well, I loved it because um, I'm, 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 I like physiology and the um, and biology and genetics was um, <laughs> to bring up our conversation before. Genetics was a lot of statistics and math, which I actually liked. <laughs> Can't do it apparently, but I liked it. <laughs> um, and. Um, I, what I liked about physiology is um, there's a, it's sort of, it's like history. 
it happened. You can't change it. Even though people try to rewrite it, you can't change it. It happened. And, and with that knowledge that is solid and doesn't change, you can build and move forward. And that's how I felt about science. Genetics, they were trying to undo the DNA molecule and say that it wasn't a double helix. And that's when I went, okay, I'm done. That, yeah. that, I, I, I can see that. I can definitely yeah. see that. Um, Crystal fans are asking, do you remember what your first scene at GL was at Guiding Light? Oh, boy. San, Christ, San Cristobal, right? Yeah, I was, in, I was in San Cristobal with, that was like in the, middle of Lake Michigan. And um, <laughs> it only took 20 minutes to get there. Um, <laughs> after a while, people were just bopping back and forth. So we <laughs> somewhere in the middle of the lake. Um, I, I think I was hiding behind a bush, um, the classic soap bush hiding. Do you, you, you know of these things? You're in the park yeah. behind the bush. I, I think I just watched, you were, you were spotting Zimmer I think as Catherine or Reva or somebody, whoever she was, yes. Princess Catherine yes, or in something. In a hotel. In a hotel, yeah. Yeah. So that I remember. And then asking who is that? And yeah, that's about it. That's all I remember. And Hillary, do you remember your one life first day? Oh, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got to work with Woodsy. Um, I was getting a cup of coffee and we were at the hotel that his family owned and I turned and bumped into him and coffee went everywhere and he started in with his, uh, we ended up fighting. Uh, you know, he was being Mr. Macho Buchanan man and I was kind of calling him on it. And uh, all I know is that we started talking about when these two characters get married and the producer's like, how do you know you're gonna get married? We're like, oh no, we're gonna get married. We're gonna get married. Cause the chemistry was just, you know, immediate and off the charts. So I just did um, a show last week with Jerry Verdorn and Erica Slezak. And Jerry told his first gay story. He drops the rubber chicken from the, the rafters. Was every day like that with Bob Woods? There was always a little something. I'll have that rubber chicken, by the way. <laughs> really? He pulled that rubber chicken on me one too many times. So I pulled it on him when we went on The View after the show went off the air. I pulled the chicken on him. Um, had it sounds all kinds of wrong, Hillary. I know, I know, but okay. um, I mean, Jerry's yeah, story, he was, always, he was always pulling pranks, especially with um, with Philly because he would, um, you know, get him in a room where he had to make an exit, and so would, would just go around to the other side and wedge a chair up and then come back. They'd do the scene and Phil couldn't get the door open or something like that, uh, and you know, cut, and then Phil would get all. He can't be doing this to me. And you know how long it takes me to get into character and all that stuff. Yeah. So he was quite well known for his antics. It's, it's the way Jerry was telling it, Jerry was trying to get through the scene because he didn't know if it was supposed to, he kept hearing a noise and it was the chicken or something. And he was trying to do it and not. The consummate stop. professional. The yeah. Consummate he was, you know, it was his first day. He was nervous. Yeah. Show must go on. <laughs> yeah. Totally, 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 totally. So uh, with Venice um, and Beacon Hill, you both direct. Where did you learn to? Did you um, yeah, so, hands on? <laughs> so, well, I think, you know, being on soaps for years, you kind of, you know, watch what happens and watch what these great directors do. So that's pretty much my experience. And I think that we just sort of figured it out as we went along. Um, like I said, Hillary has a, a very good, especially for being expeditious on sex. It's all about time, money, and all that good stuff. But it, she's got a very good eye about how things can cut together. So it it's really helpful and <laughs> uh, time saving, and and then the artistry of it too. But I think it's just doing it. You know, I was nervous about doing that, but I thought we kind, of, we, we kind of found our way in uh, what what Crystal loves the the hands-on working with the actors. And uh, I and she's good at it. She's really good at it. Um, because I remember when you first directed Venice, I remember turning to you afterwards going, you need to direct all of this because her work with the actors was wonderful what she could bring out. And the permission that she granted you to bring more life to the character. So that's, that's really important as an actor 
to have that come at you. So um, that's th that's what started her love of the directing. And um, for me, it was really the technical aspect. So it kind of worked. And also she's in front of the camera all the time. So as long as she set up and got the shots that she wanted and she knew what it was going to look like, um, then she could go and be, and I could do my thing, which is making sure that the light was good, that nothing fell, nothing was in the picture and I could get the cuts. So it, yeah. it really, yeah. Hand I'm in hand. a big fan of all the actors. I'm so, I'm like, I, I'm giddy. Like I'm such a fan of all these actors that I get to work with. So it's like, it's fun to see what people bring. It's exciting. Do you remember the Grove? Oh on the Grove, I remember watching like, um, Mich uh, what's her face? Michelle Stafford, right? At just bring life this weird, quirky little girl. It was like it was unbelievable. And Nadia bringing that thing. I mean, I, I, I literally got chills watching these people that you figured you always knew who they were. You watch them work. Yeah. yeah. It was their work that was so fabulous. Yeah. Sure. It, it, so I just, I mentioned backstage, I had watched uh, season six of Venice and season two of Beacon Hill, which I loved both. But let's step back, because I should have asked that before the directing part. Otalia on Guiding Light, I think spurred this Venice creation. Am I correct in that? Yes. You know, because, because you couldn't take Otalia with you. <laughs> Guiding Light wouldn't allow that, which would have been fantastic for fans. I think they would have loved to have continued that story yeah. outside of um, our show. So talk about, you know, what I, I assume it, it was the fan reaction that you experienced for Otalia that drove that to some degree. Um, yeah, it was because it was it was uh, we were getting that was like the time when snail mail was still coming in, but it was largely email, right? And so I would get all these packets and I'd read these letters and, and it was so personal and people who'd never watched soaps before, ever. And from all over the world, because people were taking clips and putting them on YouTube. So it was blowing up there anyway. And I just kind of thought I, it'd be a shame not to continue it. Um, because I think they just, I think Jill Hurst and, and Ellen Wheeler, and they just did a beautiful job, uh, all the writers. Mm -hmm. of Finding a good old fashioned soapy love story. Um, <laughs> things that, you know, I feel like we kind of lost along the way. And and even though the, sh the show ended, it was like the fan base was there and they gave me permission really to continue and change the names of the characters and location, but they, they, they came with me. So yeah, it was Otalia. And how did you meet Jessica and Linda, Linda Hill, who you produced they, with? They approached me about um, producing their show as a web series. Um, I've had a few people come approach me about doing web series in particular because of Venice. But uh, yeah, I met them uh, 20, 2013, 2012, something like that. And they had a great script. And we shot the first season and then they had an even better second season script. Um, and unfortunately, Hillary, you know, I had to go, okay, we can't shoot that much. So we, we <laughs> because it was, it was so good, but we had to pare it down a bit and they were great about that. And yeah, so. That, that's where your you, years of experience comes in. Had they been fans of Otalia? Is that how they? I think they knew of Venice. And I think they're, uh, Jessica in particular, I think is a big soap fan. So yeah, gotcha. yeah. And so they weren't involved in Venice. Is Venice just you? Um, well, Jessica Hill wrote um, uh, season six of Venice. Gotcha. So yeah, she's she's and she's writing the prequel to Venice in in book form. So oh wow, so we're all connected, and then we have real women together, and I mean it's great. I love being partners with them. That's amazing. And and Hillary, how did when did you get involved, and and what did Crystal come knocking. <laughs> will, you, will you come? Will you come play in my sandbox? Yeah, was play in my sandbox. That. We were. She was staying with me in um, New Jersey because they shot Guiding Light, and her family they knew it was coming to an end. So her family had already gone back to California. So I said, "Why don't you just stay with me? You can just pretty much 
roll down the hill. Nip would actually drive her to work and pick her up. <laughs> it was kind of fun, the oh, three yeah. of us. Um, and she was Wait, talking about know. it then. And, and I said, oh, is there a part in there for me? I, I'll play your mother. And she was like, no, but there's, I mean, there's a little psychic. I was like, done. Yeah. Everyone well, has talked about, I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to produce this. I'm going to do that. But Krista was the only one that was doing it. And I wanted to throw my support, whatever support that could be behind the project. Cause I believe in Krista. You, you've been telling me for years that you've wanted to produce. So Oh, well, the producing, that's that's when One Life to went off there. She said, well, why don't you come and produce? And I was like, I wouldn't know the first thing about it. You're gonna I didn't have... either. <laughs> I'm on board. So that was the Grove. That was the first yeah. producing. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I mean, it was so much fun. And then you get you get kind of bitten by a bug. And um, we just laughed the whole time that we were there. I mean, belly laughing. Uh, and it's exhausting, but you just, I mean, it's so much fun. Well, I could almost guarantee that I know um, an absolute scene where there was a lot of belly laughing between Tina, Jessica, Crystal, and I'm not sure of the gentleman who is fabulous. So Harrison. forgive me. He is fantastic. Yeah. But uh, Hillary playing the medium and, and having her. Chamberlain? I'm trying to remember. And Beth Chamberlain, correct. Yes, but Hillary's going through her her noises. I, I thought I was watching Meg Ryan in <laughs> when <laughs> you know those sage that disappears below the table. One never knows. <laughs> oh my God! I'd love to go I to mean, a like Gaia. <laughs> you must you <laughs> must have cracked up. I mean, during that. I think by the time Venice season six came around, everyone's so used to my um, <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> <Your orgasm. laughs> that they kind of just go through. I but the funny story was actually we shot that um our last night. Was that our last night? Um I know it was the end of the day. I don't know if it was our last night. Yeah, it was the very end of the day and uh <laughs> you know we were there with our eyes closed and Crystal sitting to my right <laughs> and uh Beth Chamberlain's going through her thing and stuff <laughs> and and then I, I just remember feeling this very sharp elbow in my side. I was like, what? You, so, you were so, so ticked off at me. You're like, why the fuck are you waking me up? I'm like, you're lying. I, I took a little, I just kind of, did. I had a little moment. I went off and I just like, what was that? You're like, and I forgot there was also a nod. We had this moment where we're going, she's going, I'm going. <laughs> what? It, it went on. It was Hi. good. <laughs> so tell me the gentleman's name, your friend in the in the show. Harrison Killian White. He's did did you know him before? Or? He is uh, the husband of a, a one of the hair stylists at Days of Our Lives. I met Patrick Killian at days and, and um, he said, my husband's an actor and I saw his brief little, I went great, I love him. So yeah. yeah he, 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 he was he was fab and, and I also loved the little nod when uh, Robert and Kim met and the nod to Springfield. Yeah. I really That's wanted nice. six, you know, I know people are so, and, and we'll, do, we'll do the honeymoon in seven as soon as it's safe to honeymoon, safe honeymooning. Um, but I, I, I just wanted, it was the 10th anniversary of the cancellation and I really just wanted to go back and work with all of these people again. So oh, awesome. so, Jerry Verdorn and Michael. Oh, I, I said that to Crystal. I don't think you were on yet, Hillary. I, I didn't know they were going to walk onto the set there in the, while I was watching. And for, for fans of Michael O'Leary and Jerry Verdorn, please watch this, the two of them together. Oh my God. They, I, I, you can't laugh, and you <laughs> there, and you know, you're never quite sure what Michael's going to do, nope. and what he's going to show up wearing, um, <laughs> and you know, just it, it's he, they're wet your pants, funny. Yeah, totally. And that's, really exactly, that's exactly what I said. I said oh, I yeah. literally peed when they walked in. <laughs> they just they, great stuff. Frickin' frack. 
They were wonderful. They're wonderful. But there were moments like that where you just, you just saw such genuine, um, you know, joy and love of working with each other. It was so much fun. And Robert and, and, uh, and Kim, you know, back on the screen together, it was so fun. It was so funny. It was like, I, I did have to go up and kind of whispered at them and going, I, I, I know this is like going to be really fun for you guys to, to be doing this, but, and I know you're just looking at each other lovingly in each other's eyes, but <laughs> just it back a little, a little bit because they were just they were just so happy and 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 in love with looking and being together on the screen screen again. It was so much fun. It was it was a nice reunion. I felt like people really um, wanted to reconnect as much as I did. Yeah. So I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to do it. Well, talk about the, the casting. You know, when you're writing it, do you think of you know the people you've worked with or you know, what's your process in that? Pretty much, I mean, both. I've 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 written characters for people uh, that I want to work with or that I'd love to work with again, and um, hoping that they'll say yes. You know, um, and uh, and then I've actually um, the writer will write something, and immediately somebody will pop into my head. It's it's I'm, it, there's an abundance of talent, so it, it kind of works both ways, and it's just. With every season that I've done and every show that I've done, I, it, there's never been um, bad energy. I don't, mm. you know, it's just been, it's it's hard work because, I mean, even Susan Flannery directing, I give her like 30 scenes. <laughs> like, Susan, go! Uh, and she'd walk in sweating, going, dear God, but she kept going and uh, doing a wonderful job. And it's just like, I just, it's been such a pleasure this whole experience. And I've learned so much, um, so much so that I'm, I've decided to build two houses. That, that's my production experience. <laughs> You'll have your own studio soon. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> you never know. We're gonna keep, keep going. So there'll be a season seven and we're gonna launch a campaign on Friday for It Girls on the Stoop season three, part one. Um, okay. Hillary and I. Tell me, tell me about It Girls. It <sighs> Girls is is a really if you like to cook and you like to hang out in the kitchen with your, your friends and maybe have a cocktail or whatever it's it's a fun little show we we have recipes that we share we have stories that we share and uh cocktails and confessionals about each other and ourselves and it's basically a big um a drink fest and we cook and we invite friends over so this year we're doing it really Kitchen is the first place everybody goes. Right. At a party. It's you you like, need to watch it, Alan. You'll you uh, you will really like it. Yeah, oh, just, that's great. Which show was the PP show? The first. The first? <laughs> the first. She peed sure. her pants and, then I, and then I followed suit. Literally. <laughs> I had bought hazmat suits for the Hurricane Irma down in Florida to clean out because uh, we flooded out. So to clean out and get make sure the mold and whatnot. And uh, we ended up wearing them in the show because um, I, on camera, wet my pants. Well, that, that's, well, you're getting a lot of love on the side. I'm seeing a ton of people saying "Good Girls" is the best, so I'm definitely I have to check that out. Um, it's just and, Crystal and, and I, and it's it's us, and it, we we just I mean we even had one show where which was called the Hangover Show right. where we didn't speak. <laughs> we had a hangover <laughs> and fought us, and we're making just it. Have, just have to have some grease in a hangover show. Um, somebody said their husband loved it just as much as they did. So that, that's where it's from. Speaking of cocktails, this is a question that somebody I, I saw somewhere. If you could have a cocktail with somebody, anyone dead or alive, who would you want to sit down with? Oh. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I have a lot I would like to talk to her about. For sure, yep. Or Ooh, if I want to talk to her, I want to listen to her. I have questions for Jesus. <gasps> Very good. I'm not being Very good. No, I'm sure you seriously I, would love to sit down and I, I have questions. Yeah. I do too. Those are amazing. Are amazing. How does that work? But those are amazing cuz uh, you know the the things you could learn, you know, yeah. truly yeah. it is about everything everything we could learn. Um Crystal going back to uh Olivia and Natalia. Um what did you love 
what didn't you love in how they sort of told it? And, and the Otalia story? Yeah. Um, like I, you know, I've been on record. Uh, we weren't allowed to, and you know this, we yeah, weren't allowed to, <laughs> to kiss and um, not even like a peck on the cheek, which I do with my girlfriends. Um, you know, that, that was frustrating. I, I understood uh, the point of view of corporate, but I also felt that uh, it, it was short changing the story. I mean, I loved the story as a whole and I was grateful to be a part of it um, because there was a lot, like I said earlier, there's just a lot of love and romance and that goes a long way. People want that. People want that intimacy. You don't necessarily need to kiss, but I think mm -hmm. if I were to say, you know, one thing I, I wish could have happened, it would be that kind of. It, it, it's time in every format yep. that, that that should not be an issue at this right. stage. Well, wasn't that sort of like the whole, I, I'm going to date myself here. There was a show called The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Oh God, yeah, I remember that. And, and, and you, it was all this sexual, emotional tension. And of course they could never kiss because he was a ghost. Right. Except for one time she has a dream. And I remember going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they're going to kiss, they're going to kiss. And just as they started to kiss, you know, she woke up. And I thought uh, that unrequited, don't you think that kind of fueled it even more that there was this incredible passion that the characters weren't allowed to express other than I, I, I think I think if it was the ghost and Mr. Muir, people would have a, a different <laughs> I, I think it's important for uh LGBT people to be represented. Yeah. It's too easy for straight people to say, oh that angst. Angst is nice and romance is beautiful, but everyone needs to be represented on camera. That's what I think. Yeah. Sorry. I want to I went to no, no. It makes sense. But you, being the sexual, you know, I, I get what you're saying too. Honestly, yeah. pe people people wanted more in. I think any daytime story that involved uh, lesbian and gay characters, Luke and Noah, Natalia. You know, every show. You know, it, it's definitely that's not an issue. That's what's so great about your shows. You're you're just. I mean, you and Jess in bed is a ton of fun. It is. <laughs> in the room and other people. And other people. <laughs> um, when we were talking casting, has there been anyone that you have wanted and just scheduling or you couldn't make happen just yet? And you're oh, still no, hoping? Just yet? Oh, I, I will go down the list. I, I just, <laughs> I'll keep going. I'm so, I'm. I'm so in love with daytime actors and what they bring to the table and, and then it, finding new actors that I, you know, haven't been necessarily ha had a long career like Gregory Zarian and Harrison Killian White and just amazing, amazing people. Um, I'll just keep going. I don't have anyone like specifically in mind. I mean, I, I, Hillary played my mother on um, Beacon Hill, which was yeah. a lot of fun because she's way too young to be my mom, but uh we had a good time. It was different. It was fun. And there's a, there's an actress who replaced Nadia, right? Is that um, am I? Oh, um, um, Nadia, no, 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 no. Nadia replaced an actress. Nadia replaced. replaced yeah, season six of Beacon. I thought somebody replaced there, and I can't think of um. Oh, season four. Uh, Beacon, uh, Nadia stepped in for Alicia Menchu. Menchu. Yeah, and then and also, um, um, Maren Hassler. Maren stepped in for Sarah Brown. Yes. Yeah, oh, maybe that's maybe that's it. I didn't know yeah. her. And then Mark Kapka stepped in for um, John, yeah, John Paul yeah. Lavalsian. Yeah. I didn't know the the woman who stepped in for Sarah, that she actress. Was fabulous. She, I loved her. She's fabulous. I loved her. Yeah. Kate. It was Kate, but um, yeah, Maren uh, is wonderful. Are you okay? I am. I just realized I got a low power battery. And so you're coming with me to get my charger. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a tour of her house. Oh, we Maine. are. Lovely Maine. There oh, we go. Oh. <laughs> so do you do you have two Emmys for Venice? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What was, I mean, your baby, what was that like? Oh, that was surreal. It was great though. It was a great night because, and, and they're two different categories. And I think that the newest category is even different than the first two. 
uh, that we went in. So, um, but it was surreal. It was a, a lot of people there and, and people were just genuinely happy for us and for, for me. And, you know, Brad Bell came running up to me and congratulated me because, it, it, you know, I stood up on the stage and I just said, this is freaking hard. And I have a lot <laughs> of for you guys too. So sorry if I've been an ass. Anyway, <laughs> So it's, yeah, it's it, I have to tell you a funny story. <laughs> we were back way in the nosebleeds, back in the dark by the exit door <laughs> with uh, some producers from Telemundo and, who oh, were lovely. Lovely. And we were there and um, we were all pretty much, I, Crystal was on her phone. Uh, I was talking to the, one of the producers from Telemundo. We and literally and, needs near the seat fillers. Um, right, and then so we, we were convinced we weren't going to win, so we're like, let's have some champagne. And, yeah, yeah. And, and suddenly, you know, it's the last category of the night, and we're I'm deep in conversation. My friend Lindsay, our friend Lindsay, <laughs> who had had written, I think that season, elbows us and goes, "Girls, you just won. Get up there!" <laughs> Whoops. Oh. And then it it's took not- a while to get down, but it was so much fun. The You're whole, reminding me of, um, all of all of the actors were standing, as were some of the producers, because it was really just, uh, you know, you go, girl. Crystal just, you know, uh, from an actor to crossing over to winning on that side. And we also were up against One Life to Live in one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You, you made me think of the Christine Lottie moment at the Golden Globe. In the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. And, Sorry. you know, it, so far in the back. <laughs> Exactly. You know, had to had to run up to the stage. Exactly. Um, Crystal, talk about the Real Women's Network. I mean, that's another, you know, quite an accomplishment of what. what well, Jessica and Linda Hill are are uh, and I uh, created this network, Real Women's Network, for um, female content creators. It's it's, you know, been a, a dream of mine for a long time to have a hub where women who from from all walks, some well known, some not, who have art that they've poured their soul into, um, and somehow managed to get it done because it's all about getting it done, right? Um, and I wanted to give them a home and hopefully introduce new eyeballs to their incredible art, and um, that's what we're doing. So it's it's been so much fun. Um, I've been able to meet so many new artists, people who write, act, um, and are doing what I'm doing and even making films. Um, it's just been great and, and growing um, every day. So thank you for, for bringing it up. What, um, what have you learned the most so far by doing that? Just how, um, number one, how, how little opportunity is, is offered to women in general um in in our business um it's gotten a lot better however um you know when you're looking for content and and somebody's telling you a story about how they got it done and you know over a series of weekends or you know basically grassrootsing it and just um that we need to just make it we need to have more women we need to have more women in hollywood we need to have more women in washington we it's just we got to get things you know going and this is just our small little part of 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 hopefully helping that along do you both set out to do that with the series set out to do have more women uh, working behind the scenes on beacon hill and venice we do we do. Yeah, that's great. A yeah. lot of women working yeah. behind the set. A lot of women. We're actually a little, you know, light in the men, aren't we? We we have our we have our men. We have, we have we some have our men. men. <laughs> we, but that's not how we hire, though. That's not no, how. No, that's not yeah. how we hire. It's it's who's best for it the just, job. It just sort of turns out that we have, you know. But I, you know, if I find a woman that I think is phenomenal, you know, and is the best person for the job, I'm all over that. And we do have a large female crew. Hmm, that's great. Mary Jane just said, thanks for including old lesbians in Beacon Hill. There's some funny conversations between old and young <laughs> lesbian old language. Lesbians. <laughs> old lesbians. I don't oh think there's any such thing as an old lesbian. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling pretty old and... Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I don't know okay. how, how I like that term, old. Why do we have well, to put why old? Do we have, yeah. we're, we're, and that's and that's Louise and Louise and Tina, right? 
Yeah. Oh, Louise and Tina. Isn't, I love them together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of hinted at that in Beacon Hill that, you know, they had a spat about not ever getting married, married. So, uh, yeah. They were great together. Um, speaking of Louise, uh, some fans hit me up on Twitter about you working with her on days and, you know, what was that like and, and being buried alive by her? <laughs> Uh, it, uh, if I were to be buried alive by anyone, it would be, <laughs> it would be Louise Sorrell. Um, Louise is a very, very dear friend and has been uh, for since '95 or '90 when I joined the show. Um, she's she's just there. She's totally present as an actor, and she will just bore into you. Um, so she was a great adversary. I just love those kinds of characters anyway on soaps. The ones who are just kind of like, you know, I'm going to get you. Yeah, the two go yeah. at it. It's so fun. And um, so she was, and she's funny. She laughs. So, you know, it was one of those situations where, you know, you're going to come in and she's going to bury you alive and roll on your grave and all of that. And I'm going to be on the side. Like, you, know, you know, it's a safe place to be. And it's it's always what you want on your set and you, in your work. And I, I had that with her. She's, she just laughs. It's great. That's funny. Hillary, who did you have that with on One Life? Sort of that adversary. Oh, Catherine Hickland. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Catherine Hickland. It was sort of, you know, we were, it was, uh, you know, and, and also Robin Strasser before Catherine got there. Um, I had to defend her, and, uh, you know, we were always, you know, butting heads. But Catherine Hickland actually was, you know, Lindsay Nora. Um, <laughs> I love that. What What is it like playing opposite Robin Strasser? Uh, you know, it's very similar to Crystal's experience with Louise. I mean, Robin is very, very um, professional and she's um, incredibly um, um, focused and um, likes that. And she's incredibly creative. So, she also, like me, likes to run lines and just make sure that the lines are down solid so that when you're there, you're very much in the moment. And she is brilliant that way. And really, really fun to work with because of that. Again, I think it was Jerry or Mark Duran told the story of being in the kitchen with Robin and you know the set designers maybe put red napkins. And she said, no, 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 Dorian would never have red napkins. You know, like she was so, she knew what Dorian would have in her kitchen. It, it was really amazing because it like you just embodied that, you know, she knew what that character, how she lived basically. Yeah. How she lived, you know? exactly. Yeah. Um, Crystal, you met your husband, Michael at Days. What do you remember about, you know, first meeting Michael there? Um. Well, I was very interested in who they cast because um, I knew he was my character's like ex and they, they was tracking her down. So, um, and uh, Melissa Reeves uh, auditioned with him and, and the next day I asked her, you know, who, who, who did you like and who do you think got it? And, and she said it was Michael something Italian. So I thought, okay. <laughs> and that was my first time hearing his name because I knew who he, once I saw him, I knew who where I'd seen him before from Not Slanding, right? Yeah, I was a huge Not Slanding fan, so he he was Pitchfork, right? But the first pitchfork. time I heard, like, he was Pitchfork, Pitchfork, I love it. You know, it, was, it was great, and it was so exciting, Chip, right? Yeah. Oh my god, that's Chip. great, Chip. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, we did a scene together. I think it was a flashback, and he had to kiss me, and that was my first on-screen kiss. So, oh wow, that's great! Oh well, there you go. Must have been there a you, doozy. He you must know, have been a doozy. He's just a very sweet and kind man. So it was like so nice to, you know, I was nervous anyway, and he was just so nice and so kind. It was like, yeah, that 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 made an impression. Do you does he have any desire? Or I'm not sure if I missed in previous seasons. Has he been in Beacon Hill or Venice? He's been in Venice. Oh, and, he has. Okay. And then he got killed right. off. Because, but no, you know, it, he, we had characters killed off and then we created a whole season with heaven. So we, we've gone there. Oh, fun, fun. Yeah. And I um, thought this, this season was great with the, 
you know, yeah, totally with Ricky Paul and uh, Michelle oh, Ray. They were great. Yeah, I mean, he's his character's the meanie because he plays a good meanie. I you just made me laugh because I thought of Ricky Paul because I told him that I saw that. I said, "Oh yeah, did you notice I gained weight for the role?" <laughs> 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 He's <laughs> also fabulous in um, in Beacon Hill. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's a little in, oh, yes. in season six. Or yeah, he and Scotty Bryce have some a scene that just made every sphincter seize. It was just yeah. really wonderful. Yeah. Well, I love seeing Scotty too in that. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Um, and Hillary, is it true you met your husband at fourteen? I did. Wow. Yeah, did, he was. When did six did you five. know at fourteen? I did. I thought to myself if I ever got married, that's the guy. That's incredible. Yeah, that's what it was. I didn't see him for years in there for a while, you know, but then we saw each other again at a friend's wedding and a year later we were married. Wow. Huh. And that was 37 years ago. Wow, congrats. Thank you. That, fabulous. Um, do either of your two kids or does Dylan have any desire to follow in mom and mom's footsteps? Yeah, he d Dylan does. He's um he's an incredible writer. He I during this whole pandemic uh, signed him up to master class. So he's been taking classes wow. from different directors and screenwriters, and uh, he has final draft and he's writing scripts and he's he's interested in um, possibly doing theater in some college at some point, but going to film school and acting and writing. Yeah. Oh, amazing. He's Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's having a photo shoot. In fact, his first photo shoot is today. At the for end pictures for himself? Well, it was going to be, it's senior photos, but also uh, headshots. So he's getting his oh. first ever headshots today. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And Hillary, did, did your, I know your kids are older, but. They went into finance. I'm going to take care of mommy and her uh, old age. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's nothing wrong with that at all. And I'm going to be a grandmother. Oh, congrats. Thank you. You must be excited. I am. I'm very excited. Of course, you know, there'll be a point when my, I'm, you know, my son is older than I am and my grandchildren will be older than me eventually too. But um, yeah, I'm very excited. Do you, do you know what you're having? A boy. Oh, awesome. Is his name exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I remember your son standing in the kitchen of your old house going, why do we all have to be named Phil? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna remind him. No, it's so, Philip's a lovely name. It's just. That's you know, really you know, great. I, mean, I, you know, and I said, I know, I know what happens. It just, you kind of sit there and you can't think of another name and there you go. Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, Everybody, uh, Kim just had her second. Robert's about to have his first. Yeah. 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 I think we're good here for now, but you never you, know. I don't know. Time of COVID. You, People you think never know. Well, Jake is very methodical. And, and so he's like, I want to be at least 24. I'm like, okay. All right. But whatever. Whatever you, works. You, you, you can plan. <laughs> That's right. Um, speaking sort of of COVID, is there anything you've learned about yourself during this time that you didn't sort of know prior? Wow. That's a good question. May I? Sure. Oh, I think I you know. <laughs> yeah. I learned that, um, that I wear a producer's hat in my life. I'm a planner and I like having plans. I like someone saying, we're going to go do this and then I can fill in all the dots. Um, I like, I'm detail oriented and I like that. When we can't figure out what this is, I can't figure out what this is. Mm. And I'm, I, I'm at a loss. So I'm knitting, um, I'm cleaning, I'm, I'm organizing. Um, my oven is so clean, <laughs> so clean. Um, I, you know, it's, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I mean, I've talked to Crystal about it. I'm, I kind of go around in circles sometimes. Um, it's just really, I always, I'm like, it was fine in the beginning, but now I'm kind of waiting for the, 
okay, are we done yet? Are we ready yet? Mm -hmm. Are we going to go now? So that's kind of where I'm at. I think we're all sort of at that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I learned that about me that I'm, I'm, that's my outlet. So that was kind of, got to find other outlets. Hmm. I just, I'm doing a lot of walking and it's because it, I, I can be outside and it's not 116 degrees here and it's, you know, peaceful. Um, and I've learned that I, you know, as busy as I can get and I like being busy, um, I think I'm, I used to tell people because they're like, how do you do all this stuff? I'm like, I'm a much happier person when I'm really busy. Uh, it's just who I am. So I like doing the same as you. I like to plan things and but I've learned through all of this, you know, because there's only so much you can do and um, that I just need self-care. Like I, I that's got to be more uh, of a thing in my day. So I've been doing a lot of walks and we've been talking about that. And you, you said that your husband said that when you get to five miles, you're probably not coming back. He goes, well, she can do about four and a half in an hour. And if it goes beyond that, mm, not sure you're coming back. <laughs> I know, I know. It was my escape. I literally had someone say, oh, I'd love to walk with you. No, no. I walk yeah. alone, too. I walk alone. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. I, I like to, to run alone. Um, any guilty television pleasures during this time? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you love? I thought much recommend? The, the I didn't hear. Lucifer? Oh, I've heard oh. that. I, Netflix, right? It is on Netflix. Yeah. I, I, my son, Dylan said, you, you, you'd like this, Mom. I'm like, okay, because we watched Stranger Things together. We watched all of that again. Um, and I really like it. It's, it's, it's sort of a dark comedy. So it's not, you know, about the devil, but he, he's got his issues. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't, know it was a, I didn't know it was a dark comedy. It's more of a, yeah, it's a dark comedy. that You certainly get the sense that things are going to be okay at the end of, of the episode. So it's not like this scary thing. We went through Narcos, Ugh. Narcos Mexico, and now we're into El Chapo. So I will not be going to Mexico anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw the first two seasons. I, I'm behind you know, on You that. have to watch Mexico, Narcos Mexico, because it's it's terrific. And also, um, it's just it's really just an eye opener, an eye opener. I don't want my eyes open any more than they already are. I feel yeah. like, well, just, <laughs> just I need a little break, but I, I, I yeah. if artistic value. I'll, I'll certainly check it out at some point. Yeah, the, the oh. El Chapo doesn't have a lot of artistic value. That's just sort of more. Um, in it. But I learned to cut my own hair. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I cut my own hair. It's oh, not looking good. Up. I need a little help over here, but. Did you color it? Oh, yeah. I've always colored my own hair, though. I can't do it. Mine just goes like, I don't know, brass. Oh, no, you need the. No, 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 no. You need the, the two color system. And it's you you need to get on Zoom and teach. Teacher oh, house. oh <laughs> girl, big girls. Big girls. There you go. You, but no, with my girl, hair, don't have too many cocktails color. first because you might have a horrible haircut or a horrible color. Yeah, I won't cut my hair on camera because that would just be too scary after a cocktail, but I will color my hair. Oh, oh come on. I'll pay you. I will. That's funny. I'll do it. So, oh, you know, you, all the things that we've done on It Girls, you don't think I'd color my own hair? <laughs> I, I, well, we were talking about things to do, and I'm like, I need a, a wax, but I don't think that's a proper thing to do on on Zoom. Yeah, but we got to figure that. We got to figure that out just to talk through because charge it, a higher price, people would pay. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's like my pedicure. I, I'm. I, oh no, we're not talking about toes. Things are not yeah. in the toes. My, my daughter did suggest that perhaps it was time for me to shave my legs. Oh yeah. Like, oh, thank you. Forgot about that. <laughs> She's and looking so, out for you. She's looking yeah. out for you. Yeah, she was just like, so, "Mom, you know, you still got to take care of yourself." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> You know, you, you, days of our lives, one life to live, guiding light, as the world turns, one life to live. You've told so many stories. Do you have a favorite at whichever? Well, I, I mean, look, I love Otalia just because it was so unusual and so different than, than anything I've ever done um, in my daytime career. But I just like, I love, I love good old fashioned love stories. You know, the days was all about Bo and Carly for me. and. Um, 
and the two bows, the changing of the bows. And, uh, you know, Guiding Light was uh, really Olivia. I like, I like playing a bitchy character and I just, I realize I'm, you know, it's cathartic. So I, I like playing the little bitchy, I get to say what everyone else is thinking kind of character. That was fun. And, and I had to, uh, you know, it was actually Paul Roush who encouraged me <laughs> to embrace that. And he said to me, because I said, people are going to hate me. I'm like sleeping with Alan to get Josh. He's really? I think it makes it more interesting. And I remember thinking, okay. <laughs> and he just sort of pushed me that way. And, and I, it was a great run. It was a great 10 years. Well, and there's not basically almost not a single man you didn't work with on that show. I mean, I was yeah. running through, I was running through that. I mean, I mean, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean yeah. really Brad, Bradley, Robert, you know, Ricky, Ron, uh, Ron Ju every one of them. And, yeah. and your brother, Wes, you know, like you had, you yeah. never, so uh, it, was fun. it was fun. It was fun not being, I was always concerned with soap operas. I thought, well, you have to be a part of a couple. Otherwise you're not going to survive. And, and I was wrong. It was a great, great, great run. And I loved it. And Hillary for you. Um, well, I had to be one life to live because I created that role. Um, whereas as the world turns, I stepped into it. Um, and I loved Margot. I had a great time. And with all my leading men, I had five leading men and I just really loved all of them. I had a great time. But One Life to Live, there was something about the story of Marty's rape and the rape trial. Mm -hmm. And it was also beautifully woven in with the Bonor romance. It just was such a full fleshed out story that kind of kept going and then it went into the wait until dark story. I just thought it was so brilliantly conceived and it was um, back when Michael Malone and Josh Griffin wrote, but they wrote with a year in mind, you know, they had projection, they knew where they were going to go and then they had kind of fun filling it in. And that was an art that was really lost. I think that Doug, Doug Marlin was a brainstorm with that. Same thing with, um, with all of the, the early writings on these soap operas, they used to pitch a story for a year and then they would, weave these other stories in and out and that would give more fuel and and we kind of lost that art along the way so that was one of the that that storyline to me was because of the ability to really tell a story in a long period of time well that's well you know just like chris was saying about her time i mean to be able to tell the story is what you aim to do sometimes you know for whatever reasons we always you know a story gets cut short or something but to be able to tell it in real time is just the best for you playing it and us the audience watching it yeah it's, it's really fun because you know where you're going you you and you know you 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 could kind of pace yourself in your own performances and really you knew where the climax was you knew what you were building towards you know it really allow the artistry of the performer to kind of come through, which is why I love daytime. It was like having live theater, um, you know, but in a scripted format that, that changed every day it was just, you know, theater is, I love theater, but this, this was sort of how to do theater on television. And it was really immediate and, and visceral and uh, it's just fabulous. Crystal, I forgot to mention Jeffrey, just reminded me, Daniel Cosgrove as well. Oh yeah, you know, um, for for both at, at any of your shows, you know, I know it's. As I just said you worked with a lot at Guiding Light. Is there someone you really desperately wanted to at One Life or Guiding Light or World Turns that you just the writers never, you know, could find a way to put you together, male or female, doesn't have to be romantic. Just a talented actor you admired and you really wanted to have more with. Wow. I worked with everybody. Yeah, I know. I kind of, <laughs> and you might have. You might and have. I, did. I think I worked with everybody. They tried to put um, um, Jimmy and I together, and I just adore him. So, But then when they did that, I got the giggles because by that point, you know, Cassie and Jimmy were such good friends that when he started 
doing his little swagger at me. I just lost it. He was like, you're killing me here. Come on, stop it. You got to make this work. I can't, I can't think I of really, I feel like I got to work with everyone. Um, Certainly, I'm, I'm trying to think who I'm not thinking about. I mean, I just feel like I, when you spend enough time with a group of people over yeah. a career of 20, 30 years, you, you kind of largely get the opportunity to work with the people on your own show, right? I would like to have done a stage performance with Michael Sabatino. You guys would be great. You guys he's, be great. He's, he's just spectacular on the stage. Yes. One of the best. Do ever. either of you want to get back to the stage? Do the stage? Yeah, work. A lot of work and what stage you can't, I mean, right now they haven't right had now. Yeah. So um, right. I'm, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I, I, you know, and at some point I, I love to travel again. So, and see my friends face to face. So, you know, I, I, that's where I am right now, but I'm, I'm getting ready to move out in two weeks. So I, I, <laughs> my head's going, Oh, I can't. Yeah. Do <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't are, know. Are there boxes <laughs> behind that chair? <laughs> um, they're over there. They're all off the, <laughs> the wall. It's it's looking pretty stark in here. Yeah. Um, are you writing the next seasons already? Um, season seven is being written by uh, Jessica Hill. But yes, I've I've given her story ideas that um, I'd like to see, and I certainly know what the fans want this season, and I want to give that to them. So, um, and it'll all we'll shoot in LA when when we can, probably hopefully next year. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. When you say that out loud, seventh season, how does that feel? Um, well, like I'm, I'm an old lesbian. Um, I feel like people want to see much younger people than me on camera, um, uh, and, and they will. Um, but no, I, I, uh, I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished. It's, it's certainly a team effort. Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to do this show with Hillary because, um, not only is she one of my bestest friends in the world, but, you know, it was us together working and having fun. I mean, she, we do laugh. We laugh so much after work. We want to go home and get our Caesar salad or whatever salad we're eating and, you know, have a, have a cocktail before bed and it, we just laugh and it's, it's, it's made, um, Th these productions even more exciting for me. That laughter is a great medicine, isn't oh it? Oh my God. It, well, it, we're overdosed. We <laughs> <laughs> need to laugh. So Crystal, give me a, a thought for my last question. What would fans be surprised to, Hillary, what would fans be surprised to know about Crystal? And Crystal, what would fans be surprised to know about Hillary? Oh, um, did your eyebrow just go up? I can't do I that. Did. Botox I, it's been a while since <laughs> I've been anywhere, so my eyebrow went up. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how my face moves. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, COVID. Um, you look beautiful. Go ahead, Crystal. What Actually. fans might be surprised to know about Hillary? Um, that they don't know already. That they don't if they know don't, already. If they don't know. Um, she's obviously very bright, but I often think people look at actors and go, <laughs> we, we say we're producing. It's like her turn to go be on camera. She's like, well, I'm going to put my stupid actor hat on now. It's just, <laughs> people treat you like you're just an idiot. Um, so she's <laughs> obviously very bright, um, but she's also, uh, uh, I've always said one of the things you have to be as a producer is a good student, you, you, especially if you don't know what you're doing or in life. You just have to be willing to be a good student and learn something new and be wrong. Be, be okay with being wrong about something. And I think she um, is very open to ideas outside of her norm. And I think that's unusual uh, for, for anyone really to be, to continue to grow in life and be open to, um, ideas that are different than what you're maybe raised on. Thank you. Yes. Well, life is an experience and you know, you, the only way you learn is to make a mistake. You don't make mistakes. You're going to be perfect. Ew. 
That's not fun. No, the, the, no there's, there's no one. I mean, it's like people always say, like when they were about to ask you a question, sorry if it's a stupid question. I always say there's never a stupid question because how else do we figure That's things right. out? Right. You know? Yeah, I agree. Your so, turn. Oh, I, there, there's so much. Um, but oh. what I don't know, um, I, I, I can only speak in a more, I mean, everyone knows that she's smart. Everyone knows she's beautiful. Everyone knows that um, she's a hell of a negotiator um, and that she's very passionate and practical at the same time. It's an interesting marriage um, because she's, uh, she's passionate. She wants something, but she's practical about how she needs to get it. Um, and most people who are passionate just want it, get it however they can get it. But she's very, which was why she's a good line producer and she wears, she can wear all the different hats and seamlessly. What they don't know is that as beautiful as she is, that's how she wakes up in the morning. Fuck off. That's not true. That's not, true. not a stitch of makeup on her and she glows and is beautiful. The first thing in the morning drives me nuts. Well. <laughs> Thank you. And I got to pick up my face off the pillow and she's just radiant. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that to me is the sign of someone who not only she's been taking care of business, but she's very, very um, good about taking care of herself. Oh, I'm trying. And meditating and um, skincare and just eating well and keeping her head in a good place. That's a lot of discipline. That's a lot of discipline for someone I'm who not is just constantly and not so easy to do right now no it's very hard it's much no. more challenging no my hard. daughter has pointed that out to me <laughs> <laughs> it's harder it really is because you're, you're i'm much more emotional these days and i mm -hmm. and i've just given myself permission to laugh and cry and whatever the hell i need to do and you know I don't, we just i'm going easy on myself i think we all need to do that you know, and then we're going to do some Nick girls and hopefully make people pee their pants. That is the goal. Or, we, well, I, I can tell that you've made people pee. They're th thrilled to see you. This is exactly <laughs> um, what I wanted today. This is great. I love what you're doing. I love seeing all of your faces on screen, all of our friends. You really have done a great job. Keep it up. And oh, however I can help, I'd love to. Alan, thank I have to thank you because you've you've brought so many people together who really, we needed to see each other. And um, as much as, you know, connecting with the fans out there and letting them know that we're okay and we hope that they're okay and that they're in our thoughts. So I thank you very much because- So grateful to you. Thank you. Really grateful to you for this. You're welcome. I, you know, I, I was thinking of the fans. I, you know, I didn't realize we do. I, I love seeing your faces, you know, I. Used to see everybody every day, so it's it, it is it's a nice surprise that that also has come out of this. So thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, and uh, thank you for being here. We'll, we'll I'll sign off and we'll say goodbye. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. Then it's a series. Um, don't forget you can watch them online right now. Real Women's Network. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. God bless. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>